Welcome to the HR Happy Hour Work Break. You're here with Trish and Steve. Hey, Steve Bose, how are you? I'm well, Trish. How are you? I'm good. We're kind of late in the day. It's been a busy day. Yeah, a little bit. It's, uh, I guess that's what happens in January, right? We're, you know, we're closing in. I think we can talk about it next week. I think next Monday, maybe, might possibly be the most depressing day of the year, right? There's a, mm. there's a formal day. I think it's- There is. I forget what it is. The third what? Monday of January. I'll, 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 I'll report back. I'll make sure I acknowledge the uh, depressing uh, day of the year. Yeah, it's please report I, back. <laughs> No, you know what? It's, you're right. It's like January. Everyone's kind of back to work and you're trying to accomplish a lot. You and I are no different. So yeah, it's been a little bit stressful for a Wednesday, I think. Mm. So well, anyway, but I did see some good news. Well, I don't know whoa. if it's good news. I All saw right. some news. All right. The news of the day is that the SAG award nominations are out. Have you seen the list? I have not. I've not. I've seen, uh, I've seen nothing about the SAG awards. Well, you know, I mean, I think you might have mentioned the other day that the Golden Globes, you know, was not going to happen live like normal. Apparently That's usually... they, they gave out the awards, but it yeah. was just like via Low tweet key. or something. And I didn't follow that at all either. So I don't know who won anything. I don't either. But, you know, I mean, obviously you and I have always done the Oscar show and we do try and watch at least all the the main, you know, um, movies yeah, that best come picture out. Contenders, right? Best yeah, picture. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, best male actor, best female actress or female actor, as they now call it. But anyway, so I haven't watched that, but the SAG Awards also are kind of known to be precursors to the Oscars, who's going to get the nods, who isn't. And then, of course, it goes into TV. So I will just say this. I'm not going to read any list to you, but I don't know if you've watched either of these shows. So the two shows that got the most nominations, TV shows, are Ted Lasso. Have okay. you watched Ted Lasso yet? I have not. I I, I, I think that's on a service uh, that which I do not do not have current access uh, to which. It's on Apple TV. I will say this, even if you just buy Apple TV for a month and like binge Ted Lasso, like I watched Worth the it. first episode and I was kind of like, eh, it's Jason Sudeikis who I love, mm -hmm. but I was a little bit iffy on his character. Then I just totally got into it and like binged all of them. So okay. highly recommend. The other one was Squid Game. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm in on that. I did watch that. I, I probably would be okay to watch it again. Like once you got over the you kind of got <laughs> desensitized to all the gore and the blood. Mentality. It was actually yeah. quite interesting. So I did I did enjoy that. I can't remember how many episodes it was. Was it eight or nine or um, seven? Or, yeah, I probably. Remember now. Maybe something less. like that, I think. But anyway, those two. Yeah, have I, kind of again. More, I think it's more than five each for those, both for okay. the entire cast, like the show, and then as well as individual characters. So so that. But I'm not going to read all the um, all the different awards for actors and actresses, but... Um, quite a few movies are getting that. So I'm just going to kind of bring some of these up. Okay. I haven't seen, I don't think I've seen any of these, although I've had my eye on a couple. So here's your, here's your notification or anybody else that's watching. Okay. Here's what we need to be watching in the next month or two before the Oscars. So, um, being the Ricardos, obviously about Lucy and Desi. Sure. Okay. Um, that's, uh, Javier, uh, Bardem, and I have not seen that yet. So there's uh, the power okay. of the dog. Tick, tick, boom. Okay. King Richard. That's the one about uh, another the one is Venus and Serena tennis story. Yeah. The tragedy of Macbeth. Uh, the feels lost like homework. Right. Okay. The lost daughter. But I will say this: the lost daughter is one I've really wanted to watch. I think it's on Netflix, if I'm not mistaken. And it's uh, Olivia Coleman who won oh, a couple years great. ago for the sure. favorite, which you and I mm -hmm. both loved that movie. So. Um, there's uh, Jessica Chastain and the eyes of Tammy Faye about the infamous Tammy Faye Baker. Oof. I know, right? This sounds awful. Um, I think, can we cancel the podcast for on the Oscars this I, year? I know, right? These I'm are the sure uh, Lady Gaga in the House of Gucci, Jennifer mm. Hudson, Hudson for Respect, which is the Aretha Franklin story. Um, another one called Licorice Pizza. Maybe Spider-Man will get nominated. That'll be fun. Right. Nightmare Alley. Um what else? The Tender Bar, which I think is Ben Affleck. So anyway, there are the ones you kind of need to be at least Ugh. mindful of. What was interesting was they said this was the first year, at least on the television side, where the major networks do not have nominations. It's all now going to Netflix these and Netflix, Amazon, Prime. And Apple, sure, yeah. That's right. So I don't know. Interesting well, if you're uh, wanting a movie or show to watch. I've got to get into that. I guess if we're going to do the show, we've done five or six of those shows. So, so I guess many. I'll have to get back into yeah. my highbrow entertainment. But Trish, 
Speaking of entertainment, <laughs> speaking of mainstream entertainment, Trish, it's early 2022. Okay. I think, Trish, the potential for the HR slash recruiting story of the year, Trish, story of the year, in my opinion, okay, is what's going on right now in the current season of The Bachelor. Oh my gosh. I don't watch The Bachelor. Do I have so to watch I've rejoined. Now? I've rejoined Bachelor Nation. I'm watching The Bachelor. Yeah. I recorded it. I watched it last night. It was the second uh, second episode <laughs> of the current season. Trish, there were about, I want to say, 28 to 30 uh, uh, women vying for The Bachelor's uh, affection, right. if you will, and attention on the season. I want to guess anywhere around eight of them or so, eight, eight or nine at the beginning mm -hmm. list of, 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 the, of the characters or the cast members is probably a better way to say it were right. either in HR or recruiting, right? Because they've always put their names up and they say, you know, Marianne, 27, and, you know, teacher, <laughs> Jane, 26, executive recruiter, right? right? Why I bring this up is there were so many of them. I couldn't help but noticing when I watched the first episode a couple of weeks ago, right? Right. All the HR and recruiting people in The Bachelor. Last night, Trish, in a very oh. dramatic episode of The Bachelor, I won't get into all the details that no. you haven't seen the show, but two villains emerged amongst the, the group of women. Two real, <laughs> like, you're, these are the villains of the show. Okay. And they're both recruiters. And I, in fact, even today, I looked them up, both of them on LinkedIn, because the one <laughs> article I read had their first and last names, right? I didn't know who, so I was able to find their profiles on LinkedIn. They both have recruiting profiles. They both oh have, God. you know, pages out they're there. Really they're really recruiters. Companies. They came, they're, they are like the catty, angry. One of them, they had some sort of contest where they had to get through a, a an obstacle course and the winning person got more time with the bachelor. It's such a stupid show. But the, the, the one recruiter <laughs> villain just clotheslined another one of the ladies and knocked really? her right out of the competition so she could try to win. It's awesome. It's great. I love it. I'm in on Bachelor this year, and I, I hope the uh, recruiters continue their villainy and, and their cattiness. In fact, the one one I'll, I'll stop on the Bachelor for a second. But the one recruiter was was talking so much crap. One of the other women in the house ratted her out. Okay, to oh, the no. Bachelor, and the oh. woman who ratted out the other recruiter was also in recruiting. <laughs> it's insane. What's going on out there? There's so much to unpack there. So when I don't watch the show, I have a general idea of how it works, but that's, that's crazy to me. But you know what? There is a war for talent still, right? We still hear that all the time. Obviously there's a war for good men, good bachelors. So yeah, don't get me started on this idiot bachelor too, by the way, I can't believe these women <laughs> are like throwing themselves all over this guy. But here's my, my serious question, maybe for, for right, HR okay. and workplace. And I'll just throw it out there. Yes. Like, these two women in particular come off really poorly, at least in mm -hmm. this last episode, just really bitchy. Just, right. just, they just don't come off well at all. Yeah, they're and not nice. So like if you're their employer, assuming they haven't quit their jobs, I couldn't tell mm -hmm. from the LinkedIn profiles, right? Right. If you were an employer of someone who's on a reality TV show like that, this thing was filmed a while back, right? They don't, yeah. it's not in real time. Do you, do you get, do you do anything? Do you call them into the office and say, hey, what's going on? Do you just part ways with them if they're really kind of the villain you know do you want to be associated with that they didn't do anything wrong quote unquote but they they yeah. do come off kind of poorly like at least uh, their impression that they give i think that employers certainly would be interested i think it's one thing are you catty are you you know just playing a game in other words which it's kind of a game i guess a contest right that's one thing. I think as long as you're not found to be saying anything that would be deemed inappropriate well, or one of them, harassing one of them, or uh, kind of did. Know. She kind of one of the, uh, the other woman she was feuding with uh, confessed that she had ADHD and she had sometimes oh. a hard time in conversations with multiple people. That was the context mm -hmm. of the conversation. And yeah. throughout the course of the episode, this one recruiter, villain recruiter, basically mocked her essentially for the ADHD a couple of different times said she was kind of okay. making it up and little kids have ADHD. What are you talking about? So she, you know, it was really bored. It wasn't just, yeah, she came off poorly. It was borderline offensive. It's certainly to, to people with ADHD. That yeah. one could, I think that one just without hearing it myself, but it sounds like that one you could actually be held accountable for. I mean, if you think back to lots of reality shows, there have been people on big brother or, you know, where they've actually said racist things or just very, yeah, very yeah. insensitive things. And they've lost their jobs over it. Um, so, and, and again, it depends on where she's working, I suppose. So but I would I, think if you're just catty, I think you're probably going to keep yeah. your job. I think if you are 
saying something that really crosses the line, then yeah, your job is probably we'll see gone. If she apologizes. Best. So, and I'm going to chalk this up now is <laughs> I'm just not like watching mindless TV anymore. I'm doing deep research on our industry by watching. I think you show. should. So, there you go. Well, you know what? It's interesting. I mean, I, I don't watch that particular show, but I do watch survivor or big brother because of that aspect. Right. I love seeing how people interact, how they tell the truth when they lie, how they twist and turn things, because I do think that helps you be a, a really good HR professional and even a business professional, right? Sort of seeing how people respond. So yeah, it'll be interesting to hear. I I will let you handle all of our bachelor reporting news will, and bachelor uh, updates if you would. I will be providing weekly updates for however oh my goodness. many weeks the show's on. Last thing real Trish, real quick. I know okay. we're, we're, we're going a little long. Glassdoor, yep. our friends at Glassdoor released the best places to work in 2022. Ooh. Lists came out today, I believe. Just All a right. What are the top the companies that we have either worked with or just we know. Uh, on the large employer list, this is U.S. large employers, Trish. Uh, LinkedIn, number 19 on the list. ServiceNow, okay. I just recorded. You were traveling, well, you but I just recorded a show with Gretchen. Alarcon right. from ServiceNow, that's going to run next week. ServiceNow is 23. Our friends at SAP, 42. Oh. Workday, 76. And Ronstadt, okay. Forcerite, 77. So quite a few HR, HR tech kind of companies. Yeah. In the world. Small companies list, Trish. And this was exciting to me when I read this. Oh, gosh. Small, medium-sized companies. Clavio. Do you remember the show we oh. did with Jenny Dearborn from Clavio? I do. Oh, yes. Oh, Jenny's great. Ago, a month ago. Yes. So we, Jenny Dearborn and Clavio, number eight on the small business, Ooh, uh, best okay. place to work with. Lyra Health, Trish, who we just oh, did a webinar with. We did. Right before the new year, number 23. Yeah. And okay. Better Up, the coaching kind of uh, HR tech uh, software That's company, right. number 29. So wanted to just kind of note that. I thought it was pretty cool, especially to see like folks we actually have done some work with, like right. Lyra Health or, or guests we've had on the show, like Clavio. I think that's pretty awesome. SAP, we've done some things with and, and, and we'll yeah, be doing some obviously. more things with soon. So. Congrats to all those companies. Yeah, congrats to all of them. And you know what? I hope that we start seeing more, right? Because you think about our business as people. And so you would hope that all the companies that we're working, you know, with and analyzing that they are, um, you know, hitting that list. So, yeah. well, congratulations. That's a good list to be on. We we sort of poke fun at lists sometimes, but I think that's an actual valid list. So no, it's all by employee ratings. Them. So that's how that right. works. Yeah. Right. Very good. All right. Well, fun stuff. Hey, listen, thank you for taking a break with me, even though it's a little bit later in the day. And uh, thanks to everyone for watching. As always, uh, Steve mentioned, we have a new show that's going to be coming out with Gretchen Alarcon from service now. But in the meantime, we've got a couple other shows that are just recently up. So check those out where you get your favorite podcasts on the HR Happy Hour Network. And we will see you back here Friday. Bye, everyone.